Hey everybody, welcome back. I, somebody in the Discord mentioned streaks getting up there. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Would you look at that? 28 wins in a row. It's gonna be a front half character. Oh, the frontest of halves. You've heard of him. The game is named after him to NNCFG77. Here we are. Now, I don't want to jinx it, and, and if you believe in a jinx, this is like the heaviest jinx you could possibly muster. Um, we could possibly roll this streak into Repentance. That's all I'm saying. Now, I know, like, I, I feel, and this is going to sound like a backhanded compliment, it's actually just a compliment, but also some genuine sympathy. I kind of feel for Sinvicta. You know, he's on like a, an 1100 win streak or something ridiculous like that. And, and over the... Oh, I, how did I not take damage from what... I collided with it, but didn't take damage. Alright. You know, every once in a while, the game... Uh, it, it, some things seem to go wrong in a way that's kind of negative for you. And every once in a while, they seem to go <laughs> right in a way that's kind of positive for you. Case in point with this ladder right here. Mm, it's the first black market since, like, Q2 of 2020, man. This is crazy. But I, I do like I look, I'm I'm jealous as well. Having having a, an enormous win streak would be like crazy, right? That would be so much fun, um, and also so t uh, tense. But you know, I would I would kill to get it for sure. I mean, not literally. That would be absurd. But um, I, I would be interested for the very least. Spe uh, just as I'm interested in this room right here, where a lot of interesting things could go down. Um, just want to play this guy first and see where we stand, maybe. Do like a key. We always like a key. But, uh, oh, interesting. Bumbo. And and he, he do be wanting coin. How about that? Um, what, what the heck is he going to do when Repentance comes out? You know, like you kind of got to, I guess you could maintain two separate save files. Perhaps you're thinking to yourself, why not just, you know, keep the streak going? Well, it's kind of like a crappy way to play Repentance, right? Is just... You know, his playstyle revolves to some extent around minimizing risk. How are you supposed to minimize risk, uh, but still have fun if you, like, don't know what any of the new items do? <laughs> Seems like kind of a... kind of an annoying way to play that game. Um... Not, not just for the viewer, but for him as well. And then I'm like, well, okay, you could, you could just give up on the streak, but the streak is like a major, uh... You know, it's an event in his channel, right? So I guess you could maybe keep two runs going simultaneously, but then, you know, I don't know. It's one of those things I think you got to live in the real world, right? Every every decision that you make when it comes to things like that, and not just in business, but, you know, with family as well, um, you know, it, it comes with, uh, with positives and negatives. You could see it as, like, a huge negative, I guess, is like, oh, the routine's being disrupted a little bit. Or you can see it for what it actually is, which is an enormous positive with a couple of, you know... Things to work out operationally, but but either way, like new content is a a rising tide that raises all boats when it comes to repentance. I think so. For me, it's easy. I just you know pivot. You know, hey, I've maybe won a few games in a row, but we're gonna start playing repentance, and everyone's gonna pog up. <laughs> I don't have stewardship over like a quadruple digit streak, at least as of right now. But anyway, this is a, a mighty interesting first floor. I do, I mean, it's tricky, right? Like, what do you do in this black market? You kind of feel like you want to, um... See if we get some bumbo juice here. Oh my god, coupon! Which has now given us an item for free. Now, I, I do like the coupon. I don't think it's better than the D6 overall, but I do like it. Um, I kind of feel compelled to, uh... To take a bunch of items in here, just because of the fact that we, we seem to get a, uh, a black market so rarely. The candle. I mean, it's a great item, but we, we definitely want to re-roll it. Do we want to re-roll the coupon? Yeah, let, let's do that. Just, just get it done. Okay, there's five bombs. And more options. More options is actually a really good get. And then I figured, okay, just pick up one extra item. For now, let's just pick up one extra item. <laughs> So more options is double item rooms. We have been to our item room on this floor, but that's fine. We actually got a pretty good item to begin with. We will... Buddy in a box, is it worth 1 HP? I think that's not the right question. 
You know, it, it, it's it's worth one HP if you've got too much HP. So the real question is, do I have enough HP to make it worth one HP? The answer is no. Am I disappointed to have gotten it? The answer is also not really. Not really. Um, does up our DPS a little bit. Got a good trinket, a trinket that guarantees a charge. I should not have taken that. Even as I was getting it, I was like, this is not the right thing to do. Um, but it, it happens for sure. Good damage. He's going to do another one. You knew it was coming. Excuse me. He must have been like a pixel away from where he was going to get hit there. But this floor is not done yet. Super bandage is, is a beautiful item. And if you'll allow me, I'm going to caffeinate here. Uh, finger is a little dangerous here. Allow me to caffeinate because we, we got a little bit of time left on this floor. You know, they call them fingers, but I've never seen them thing. Oh, there they go. Okay, so just chill out for a second here. We got a reroll. That's remote detonator. We already got most of the value. See what you get here, if, if anything. Um, Succubus is an amazing item. Reroll again. Sackhead is an amazing item. Placebo, not an amazing item. Ventricular Razor, not an amazing item for us right now. Chaos, a, a truly uh, a scary item for us right now. Um, so this is something, you know, you, you wanted the Zane. How's that for, for some Xanity? Some insanity? We got ourselves, uh, we took every single mar uh, item on the black market. Now we find ourselves, to be fair, with the, with the selection of very great things. I just want a battery charge, thank you so much. Um, and if there's another one, that might be interesting for us in the future as well. Otherwise, give me one of those and let's, let's move on with our lives. We're gonna re-roll the black market yet again. I mean, this has the potential, especially, I was going to say especially with the deal with the devil on the next floor, but now I realize that as a result of chaos, we're not going to necessarily be able to rely on the deal with the devil to have a higher caliber of items than we would normally have, and, you know, instead we're going to be looking to get, suppose rhetorically speaking, we just try to get as many item pedestals as possible. If I were an item pedestal, where would I show up? I would choose to show up in the area with the highest amount of possible yield. Um, anyway, we're going to we're gonna go down here. It's still very good, don't get me wrong, but, you know, chaos, it... It does play to our weaknesses, if that makes sense. Without being, like, too much of a coward about it. It kind of plays to our weaknesses. Um, because you tend to have less reliable HP upgrades. Although you can get them anywhere, the percentage chance, uh, you know, for you to get them on a reliable, kind of, you know, drip-drip basis, the way you would from a boss room, is, uh, it goes out the window, right? We're still in, like, an awesome position, though. Like, this is definitely not a position where, you know, I would look at this and assume that we're uh, really in that much danger at all. It's just, you know, something to keep an eye out for. Just something to keep an eye out for. We do have a Chaos card, of course. A Chaos card is uh, very useful. And, and to be honest with you, we probably will not save it for too long because we want to be able to hold something else. So, if you want to get value out of a, a Chaos card... My personal take, you know, it might seem a little bit like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> well, we don't need to go back into that room, so that's okay. I think that's a heavy reroll. It's not bad. In fact, now I'm like, I'm, I'm racking my brain and I'm like, maybe it's a tears upgrade. But I think we got to root for something a little bit stronger. And uh, it's not that, that's for sure. Skeleton key, again, like, it's a good item if you get it for free. Trading, you know, 60% of your existing HP in order to pick up keys that you pretty much already have. <laughs> I wouldn't... I mean, personally, I wouldn't recommend it, but that that's just me, I suppose. How am I doing? Uh, I'm doing well, thank you for asking. It, I don't know how that got freed there. Oh my god, look at this. Baby had another great sleep last night. Can't complain about that at all. A, a good enough sleep that I'm, like, embarrassed to tell you how good it was, because I don't want you to uh, be like, Oh, it must be nice. That, that's how good the sleep was. Everything's going well. Had a great stream yesterday. Death Stranding continues to be fun. Um, and then, you know, I thought it would be... Uh, I thought it would be a good time to play uh, a little bit of Family Feud on Switch, just because, like, I don't, I don't necessarily think the game is good. I don't want to be too rude about it, like... Like, the Family Feud, to begin with, is not really that great of a platform unless you're uh, an idiot who loves game shows like myself. 
I say that with, with in the most, um, in the nicest way possible, right? I still don't think we take that. And I definitely do not think we take that either. But, you know, there's, there's some things about, oh, you know what? Sure. There's some things about that game in particular that are annoying, like the the fact that every time you play the game, the host gives you the tutorial over and over. There's so much like unnecessary, um, you know, tutorialization even after the seventeenth time that you've played it. Um, but I, I thought we would only play it for like you know an hour, and I would be struggling to finish that hour. We ran into an opponent, Anna Banana, who is actually uh, you know a great sport and and wanted to keep playing, so we just did rematch after rematch, and it seemed to go uh, seemed like people were enjoying it. So we'll, we'll probably go back to the well on Family Feud at some point. Then we checked out Main Assembly, and and you know that's a game basically you can build your own robot. It's very similar to like Scrap Mechanic. It's a great game. I, I had a good time with it, but increasingly, definitely coming to the realization, and I, w I will take this. I regret it slightly, but it's not it's not too bad. Uh, increasingly increasingly coming to the realization that you know it's just not um, it's not a, a genre of game that I uh, would consider my strong suit. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, and I, I, the only way you get better at something, you know, is to is to do it more often, I suppose, and practice it and study it and yada yada yada. No doubt about that. But then again, you know, my lot in life perhaps is not to be good at engineering type games. It's to, you know, crack jokes over top of, you know, whatever you can see on your video screens and, uh, you know, we, we proceed accordingly. Hmm. Wouldn't mind... The, the best resource that we have in that shop is not an item. It's the fact that there is a pedestal that's half price. If we can somehow get... Uh, a re-roll, and, and we're probably not going to prioritize it, because we could also be out of this floor, essentially, right here. Uh, tears upgrade of the utmost importance. Maybe a little magic mush wouldn't hurt. Always worth Yeah, I think it's good. Told you. Just felt right. I also think this is a secret room. Just felt, like, secret roomish to me. And then, you know what? 20 mushrooms? No doubt we're getting magic mush here. Or a bunch of great pills. Great pill. Great pill. Great pill. Alright, I was hoping there'd be a joke in there. <laughs> I was hoping we would get a pill that is not so great, and we would say great pill, and then the audience would applaud. So true. And then Al Albert Einstein would hand me a crisp $100 bill. We were so close to that $100 bill. Anyway, yeah, the stream yesterday was good. Everything's like, you know, it's just kind of normal over here. I mean, as, as normal as it can be given the circumstances of the, you know, ongoing global health crisis. But I'm not trying to necessarily bring people down, but I'm also not trying to, you know, ignore it in the first place. So although we did get a reroll, we did not get any extra money, um, which I actually considered substantially more likely that we would get that than the other. But let's... Uh See what we can get in our second secret room, and then we'll move on. Very nice. Well worth a bomb. Very nice. So, yeah. Eager to uh, to see how today's stream goes as well. Trying to avoid talking about the content as much as instead just making the content. But again, I ask for your sympathy. And we give it to you, the people. I ask for your sympathy. Uh, sorry, I, I have not seen The Dark Knight Rises recently, but... Uh, I ask for your sympathy because of the fact that it's very, it's a hard time to generate anecdotes, man. The only way you can generate anecdotes is by being irresponsible. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily say it's irresponsible to, to put yourself in a situation where you can experience some anecdotes. Like, he's going to the grocery store, irresponsible. Um, I mean, there, there's going to be people watching this that will say yes. I probably wouldn't. Oh, this is so. This is tempting, man. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take the damage because I'm a coward. But um, I think there's people out there that would say yes. I would consider, you know, like you have to buy food. Of course, you can get it delivered. But you know, sometimes you're gonna um, be missing something that you feel like you need. You can go out and get it. That if you're going out and you're like, you know, you know, life's not worth living without going to a nightclub, and you're going out and you know, yelling and you know, getting spit on by people, then. You know, I, I'm not going to tell you what to do in your private life, but, you know, I, I just hope you're respecting the 
you know, 10-day observation period following that, what appears to be that uh, crazy night out. Um, what is the purpose of get out of jail free card? <laughs> I know I've been down this road before, but, but you know, if you're going to the grocery store or if you're, you know, doing doing whatever, that that is more of a along the sides of a city. Like if you go into a gas station to fill up your car or something like that, and you had an anecdote, uh, that's not a black market anecdote, okay? That is that as far as I'm concerned, that's a legal anecdote. Um. But if you were like, well, I was at the pool yesterday at the Sandals Resort, I'd be like, ah, 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 ah. Why did I use a bomb, by the way, to get that demon heart earlier when we have, uh... So I'm just heading off the comments at the pass. Mmm, angled bracket, right. Has Holy Grail shift enter to start a new line? Angle bracket, right. Uses a bomb to get the demon heart? I don't get it, man. What gives? Sorry, sorry, we're, we're moving on. Allowing myself to get the own top comment on my video for once. People are like, dang, he took my whole shtick. <laughs> that was me, I'm the guy who invented that right angle bracket stuff, man. You can't just take my, you can't just bogart my bit like that. But yeah, we're, we're, we're light on anecdotes. Like, the, the basic anecdote that I have right now is that, uh, you know, we, we've been putting our baby to sleep a little bit earlier uh, at night, you know? So we used to put her to sleep at, you know, maybe like 10, 10.30. Just it, mostly because that's the way it, it fit into our schedule. Um, you know, it's not like she has to get up for school <laughs> or anything like that. And, you know, we, we put her to sleep when she's tired, you know? We didn't, like you know, feed her a cup of coffee or something like that to keep her awake until then. It's just the schedule she happened to be on. Newborns don't really have, like, um... Well, I mean, at, at four months, they probably do, but w when they're first born, they don't really have a concept of, like, um, you know, night and day. You, you've kind of got to structure that for them, so you have a lot of agency over that, but... Um, we started putting her to bed a little bit earlier, um, really so that she could sleep a little bit longer. Um, the problem is... It's not a major problem, but... We put her to bed at like 8, 8.30, and we, we live in a city, let's not call it the city that never sleeps, but, you know, industry's going on at all times, right? So we'll, we'll occasionally still, like 8.30 or 9 p.m., we'll get like doorbell knocks or, or, or doorbell rings or door knocks and stuff like that. And it's usually just like, you know, an Amazon package that's being dropped off late in the day or something like that. But I'm like, I gotta draft, like, an enormous sign or something like that and put it on. I, I, I'm gonna have one of those signs that you'll see, like, being made fun of on Reddit. Under no circumstances is this doorbell to be rung. Even if our own domicile is on fire and you think the only way to save our lives is to ring this doorbell, this doorbell, it is illegal to ring. It is a Class 17 felony. Even if you're behind nine proxies, I will find you and I will yell at you. Because the, the doorbell, is, you know, starts waking the baby up. I guess I could probably just unwire it. But I don't know. Based on how, like, the community feels like I'm going to handle redstone. <laughs> they're like, I oh, I think NL. Like, we're talking about in Minecraft, like, having a door literally hooked up to a button. Where if you press the button, the door opens. People were like, I don't know if he can handle it. I'll have you know, I did networking in Java. Um, I can handle a single redstone button linked up to a door. And Java was a language that I'm pretty sure it was invented when, like, the internet had only one website. It was like www.us.gov. They're like, are we going to need any internet uh, modules in this? Nah, come on, just ship it, man. Don't be ridiculous. Anyway. That's, that's my anecdote. My anecdote is like, it, it's a complicated stew of emotions. Oh, that thing I ordered is finally here, but also if you ring the doorbell again, we're gonna have some words. I'm not gonna say it's on site. I'm not gonna threaten to fight the delivery driver. That's too far. Because, you know, I mean, they're just, they're doing right by them. Don't get me wrong. And in fact, I mean, if they're delivering something at like, you know, 8.39 p.m., they're probably having like a pretty crappy night themselves. I'm not trying to cause problems. I also do understand that, you know what, let's let's see what's going on in here. I also do understand that, you know, the average person probably wants their doorbell to be rung. 
You know, I, I, I recognize... I, I try to recognize when I'm in the minority case on a lot of these things. Like, I've, I've talked about my, uh, like, the meal delivery service we order from. I recognize fully... Oh, that's so good. I recognize fully I'm in the minority case, I think, that would actually get value from the service. Because the meals are... Uh, not super cheap, but, but much cheaper than delivery. But, you know, that would still... Sorry, Bumbo. Probably puts them in the, you know... I mean, it's more expensive than buying the groceries or meal prepping. Um, and they're not that delicious. What they are is extraordinarily convenient. So I've never, I haven't gone on record as being like, oh, I like, I really recommend this service. The, the extent that I would go to is if you prioritize the same thing out of your lunches that I do, which is the ability to cram them into your yearning maw um, within, I don't know, I would say like an average of six to eight minutes per meal, but you also find yourself uh, not apt to meal prep at the present moment then uh, then I, I would recommend it, honestly. Then I would recommend it at that point. <laughs> if, if you have, a, you know, a little bit of disposable income and your, your main goal with a lunch is to eat it as quickly as possible, ideally have it maintain some level of nutritional balance as well. He's frozen, man. But also, uh, you know, mainly eat it insanely quickly but, and have it at your leisure. Then I I would recommend it, but I don't I don't consider myself to be in the majority on that one for sure. If I I, I consider my own unique use case to validate it. That's how I feel about the doorbell as well. You know, when we're talking about the doorbell. I think most people want their doorbell to be rung when there's a package outside. For me, even like pre-pandemic, we were basically living our whole life through Amazon. Um, we're getting a reroll in a second anyway, so. Um, but we were basically living our whole life through Amazon. Like a lot of, a lot of groceries we purchased through Amazon to begin with. I, I really just don't see a need, to be honest, for, for the one-up. Definitely this is Beelzebub though, right? That's pretty good. Um, so, kind of, there's just a couple of periods throughout the day where I just like walk outside. And I'm like, oh, packages. <laughs> Who would have thought? Oh, we can leave. So again, I'm not, you know, I think there's, uh, I don't know, I don't want to call it a bias or whatever, but, you know, anytime a streamer expresses an opinion, there is a tendency for some elements in the audience, I would say, to uh, look at it and go, whoa, well, the whole world isn't like you. Now, the thing is, unlike most streamers, I actually know that. No disrespect to the other streamers, but I'm just built different. You know, it takes, uh, you know, like, you ever think about the fact that, like, sometimes I'll come up with an idea. It's a great idea. Probably a trillion dollar idea, if I'm being modest. And uh, people will be like, well, I wouldn't use that. Yeah, I know. That's fine. You know, you know how many, like, s products and services are out there that I've never interacted with in my life? And yet, somehow, they still have a market. It's crazy. Like, I don't eat yogurt at all. I don't like yogurt. I've eaten it many times. It's spun, right? Oh, baby, all these transformations. Even though I don't eat yogurt... I, I've eaten skier a few times, admittedly, and I think skier is a little better, but for my, for my personal taste. But d despite never buying yogurt, every time I go to the grocery store, there's, there's more yogurt. It used to just be like, you know, strawberry, blueberry, and then they added fruit on the bottom. Whoa, crazy. Okay, and then I was like, fruit on the bottom? Th this thing's a fad. Don't they realize it? Then they added gogurt. For people who love yogurt but never sit down. I said that's ridiculous. Give me some more Stagurt. I don't need Gogurt. Unless it's going away from me. And then they added Greek yogurt. I'm like, what's next? You know? Cyprus yogurt? I don't, look, I don't have any punchlines for these. I'm feeling a little undercaloried myself right now. <laughs> but every the, the point is... Every time I go to the grocery store, there's more and more yogurts, despite me never interfacing with the industry at all. All sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff I've never purchased. And yet the industry out there remains, because the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. What might be right for you might not be right for some. You know, if, if they made the grocery store in my image, it would be like three aisles. There would be a little freezer aisle with cold brew coffee in it. 
more like a refrigerator aisle, I guess. But there, there'd be a cold aisle with some cold brew coffee in it. Um, for those times when I'm maybe a little too lazy to make my own. Um, there would be uh, a granola bar and, and a protein bar aisle. And then, like, literally apart from that, it would just be like 17 snack aisles that I probably shouldn't be walking down. Well, and, okay, like, so you're, like, you don't eat vegetables? No, but, like, most of the vegetable quotient is, like, it's handled by the, the, the like, the HelloFresh and the lunch delivery service and it's set. Like, I, I, I eat a good deal of vegetables. My problem from a nutritional standpoint is not a lack of uh, nutritional meals. It's really just, a, like, I'm, I'm eating too many vegetables. I'm just also eating too many carbohydrates. Probably too much protein. A little bit too much fat as well would not surprise me. Um, and, the, like, all the vitamins and minerals, I'm getting too much of. I'm just getting too much of everything. <laughs> if, we could, if we could keep, like, roughly the same diet, but just scale it down about, you know, 15 to 25 percent, I think that's, that's where I would be in a good spot. Anyway. We should be talking about Isaac. Like, I've, I've been uh, uh, pudgy for various different reasons in my life. Uh, and, you know, I'm not in the worst shape of my life right now, which is kind of... I'm really glad that, like, in 2019 and the start of 2020, I took my health much more seriously. Um, because, like, the one-two punch of a, an unending global pandemic, plus, uh, you know, having a baby and having all your routines incredibly disrupted for at least some time, uh, it, it, that's a that's a doozy, man. Like I'm, I'm just trying to be kind to myself and be like, you know, you got you got excuses. Not to say you couldn't maintain your health over the period a little better for sure, but you got excuses for like you know slacking a little bit. Your priorities have changed in a bit of a in a, in a big way. But um, maybe that's enabling a little mediocrity. But I'm, I'm going to choose to take that for now. Um, but I, I've been pudgy for various reasons. I'm pudgy right now not because I eat. Uh, you know, like, I have poor nutritional choices in the sense, like, I never eat lettuce or whatever. I just, uh, whatever you put in front of me, I'm just gonna eat it, you know? If you put a lot of vegetables in front of me, I'm, I'm gonna eat those vegetables. If you put a lot of... I don't really care about that item. I'd rather reroll this. Mission failed, by the way. Um, Yera is probably better than Black Rune right now, but it's it's a little spiced, for sure. Uh, yeah, basically, I'm on a seafood diet. I see food, I eat it. When I was younger, like, as a, as a little kid, maybe, let's say, like, a 10-year-old, I was pudgy for different reasons. I had a, a terrible, like, picky eating habit. Um, I didn't eat, like, exclusively chicken nuggets or anything like that. Like, my, my parents still tried to have healthy foods, but definitely ate, like, very few vegetables. Essentially, no leafy greens. Um, and then, like... You know, it's not my parents' fault, you know, nutrition changes over time. But the other thing was, you know, my parents were like, you know, you shouldn't drink soda, soda's bad for you. But they bought like, I don't know, liters and liters of concentrate fruit juice every, uh, every week. And you know, it, it's very easy to trick yourself into thinking that fruit juice concentrate is totally fine to drink. Because you're like, it's fruit. But really, it's like... I don't know if it's as bad for you as a soda, but it's not even in the same ballpark as, like, a water, right? So, you know, drinking two glasses of water a day and six glasses of, like, concentrate mango juice. <laughs> combined with being a, a picky eater who mostly just like fried brown foods. Um, that, that, that contributed to some pudginess as a child. Also being prepubescent, of course. Then in college, you know, I went through some periods where I was a little leaner, and I went through some periods where I was a little, uh, a little softer. Most of the soft, uh, periods essentially, you know, were caused by, uh, overindulging in adult beverages, and then the, the binge eating that comes alongside it. You know, you, you go out for trivia night and you're like, ah, we'll just have a couple drinks. And then you're like nine beers later and you're like, we should all eat our a pizza to ourselves. Like one each. And you're like, okay, that sounds awesome. And then you go to bed and you're like, this is the best life I could ever imagine. And then you wake up and you're like, what did I do, man? Um, yeah, but then, you know, that's not a problem anymore. Um, and then, you, you know, now it's mostly like... Now it's mostly having a convenient excuse <laughs> that 
I'm like, that. my gym is not closed, but I'm still kind of of the opinion that it should be. I know that sounds convenient, but I'm like, I like I, I feel bad for our gym owners, don't get me wrong. Because I'm like, I, I would love to feel safe going to your establishment. But I don't think I would, at least not until... And I'm vaccinated, and to be honest, like, I'm pretty much, like, end of the line. Despite being old, I'm still young enough to qualify for, like, the young demographic, which means, you know, I'll be, I'll be last of the adults, essentially, to be vaccinated. So I'm like, I get that they gotta run a business, and if they had to stay closed for an entire year, like, you know, they, they would shut down. I personally don't really feel comfortable going back into the gym. Not that the only way you can exercise is going back into the gym, but anyway. Um, that, that convenient excuse combined with like, well, I, I can't go to the gym for an hour. I, I can't go out for a half hour run and leave my wife alone with the baby. What if there's a, a, a crisis that only I can solve? <laughs> Which, I'm gonna tell you, may happen later in the baby's life. There may be a dad-focused, you know, problem that only a dad can, well, I shouldn't say only a dad can solve, but that, that my unique skill set will be helpful with, you know? In the newborn phase, not so much. There, there are definitely urgent problems that only mom can fix. Dad, on the other hand, is mostly there for for assistant work and and support, which I'm I'm happy to do. Don't get me wrong. Okay, only take the good items, please. Don't be a fool. Like for example, this is a good item. Everything else, we can kind of. I mean, we might as well pick it up temporarily. I guess. I guess we could get three spirit hearts out of Guppy's paw. Why not? Like, we're all in for a penny, in for a frickin' pound, man. Just do that. Give me a quick reroll here. It's extremely great. I'm not really worried about the prayer card, but... Yeah, this is, uh, this is good stuff. So, dude, this is gonna be another win, and... You know, it's a win! I'm, I'm not proud of it because of the fact that we, like, played super well or anything like that. But I am kind of proud of the way we handled that first floor. And it, that's one of my favorite types of Isaac runs, for sure. Is when you get one of the, Oh my god, really? We didn't get the deaths list on that one? It's when you get one of those runs where you can really, like... By by spending, like, five extra minutes on the first floor, you could totally change the, the flavor of the run. Like, who knows what this run looks like without that uh, black market, right? Like, what the heck does this run look like if we don't take Chaos? Nobody knows, man, because you'd have to have, like, a freaking time machine. Nobody knows, dude. Anyway, what am I doing here? Well, we're just kind of like, are we reeling in the years of finishing up the run? Are you adding a one to your streak? What? Can I ask you a question? And this is like a little bit more um, lighthearted. What the heck is Teak? <laughs> People are... When I was a kid, you know, in the 90s, the 90s are like a weird memory to me. Because like I was a little kid for most of it. I, I was like 2 to 12, right? And I don't remember a lot of it, and even the stuff that I do remember is almost 30 years ago at this point, right? Um, I remember Friends, I remember a lot of people trying to look like Jennifer Aniston. I remember Office Space popped off. I remember uh, The Simpsons was very popular, Jurassic Park was a hot movie. And, you know, I was at the age where, like, if your parents let you watch Jurassic Park, you were like, oh... Jeez Louise, don't they care about your well-being? That's pretty spooky. And I was in like first grade when it came out. But anyway, so that's like the 90s for me. And then it's... it's The 90s for me is basically like... It opens with Jurassic Park and it ends with The Matrix. Um, but in the 90s, freaking everybody was talking about teak cabinets all the time. I always thought they were saying tea cabinet. Like it was either a cabinet shaped like the letter. Or it was something that you kept like tea bags and... I don't know, supplies in. Um... It turns out that I think teak is a sort of wood, but I'm not sure if you can have a teak tree. You can have a tea tree, because that's where the tea tree oil comes from, but I, I think it, teak, is teak like reclaimed wood or something? Is it like a wood you, you salvage off of an old sunken ship? You might think I'm being facetious, but I've, I've, I genuinely don't know what teak is. It's the same, like... Teak occupies the same space in my head as wrought iron. Which for... And, and maybe th I can save somebody from the same embarrassment that I've gone through. Wrought iron is W-R-O-U-G-H-T. Wrought iron. It is not R-O-D iron. 
I as a kid, everyone was talking about ooh, wrought iron, wrought iron. I was like, man, it's like iron that comes in a rod. No, it, it turns out it's iron that was wrought. I don't know, wrought from the fires of Mount Doom or what have you. But I, like, it's not like it just you know. I don't I don't think you mine wrought iron. I think you mine iron. And then you rot it, <laughs> but not with ROT. Anyway, for now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And watch me live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Northern Lion. I'm there every day, uh, except for Saturday. 11 to 4, Pacific time. Normie 11 to 4, not like, you know, late night 11 to 4. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See you!